Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife Harriet as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. Hi, Pa. Oh, hi. Hey, where are you going with all that junk? Please, Pa, this isn't junk. This is valuable merchandise. <laughs> oh, by golly, you could have fooled me. Where'd you get it? Oh, well, Thorny and I have been doing a little trading. I like this tire jack, isn't it a beauty? Yeah, it's one of the old timers. Well, that sure brings back a lot of memories. Yeah, if I had something else to trade, I could have gotten three more of those. What in the world would you do with four tire jacks? I was figuring on building a car in the backyard this summer. Oh. There's an old bicycle wheel? Yes, sir. Well, gee, this is very interesting, Dave, but what do you think you can do with this? I don't know. Looks like it might come in handy, though. I'll figure out something. Oh. I suppose you can inflate this old inner tube here and... Use it for swimming or boating or fishing this summer, huh? Yeah, that's a good idea. Except it has a few holes in it. Oh. Well, here, don't leave this valuable merchandise around the living room where your mother can see it. Oh, no, I won't, Pop. I'm going to put it in the hall closet. Oh, no, Dave, don't put it in the hall closet. There's scarcely room enough to hang coats in there now. Take it out to the garage, will you? Okay, Pop. <laughs> Rick, what have you got here? It's a wheelbarrow full of valuables. Well, look, you can't leave this out in the hall. It won't fit in the closet. I tried it. Well, of course it won't fit in the closet. Where'd you get this stuff? Well, we've been trading. Well, so David told me. Look, Ricky, you and David can't go around collecting all the neighborhood old junk and dumping it in our hall closet, you know. He didn't know old junk, Pa. I just traded it. Well, take it out to the garage. Oh, heck, Pop. I just got finished dumping one load in there. Well, yeah, so I see. Golly, you're as bad as David, Rick. You guys could stand a few lessons in trading. <laughs> Boy, here's a, a valuable piece of merchandise. What are you going to do with this? I'm going to make a couple of slingshots. <laughs> Where'd you get this? What's that? This copy of the Police Gazette. Who traded you this? Oh, Ronnie Vito. I got Jip, too, boy. There's not one picture of a policeman in the whole thing. <laughs> oh, no. Pop. Well, look, you're old enough to know better than this. Well, that isn't mine, Pop. It must be David's. <laughs> well, that's even worse. Yeah, I guess David got stuck, huh, Pop? Well, if he paid more than ten cents for this, he did. Well, I gotta get cleaned up. No, 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 wait a minute, Rick. Take this stuff out to the garage first. Well, it isn't all mine, Pop. Well, you wheel the wheelbarrow out, and I'll take the rest of this junk out. And listen, this goes for you and David. I don't mind your trading, but don't get stuck all the time. Don't take all the neighborhood old junk and dump it in our house. I wonder who stuck David with that old clock. Oh, I don't know. I guess David's pretty dumb, huh, Pa? It would seem so. I guess I am, too. Pa? Yeah? Do you believe in the old saying, like, father, like son? <laughs> Hi, Thorny. Where are you going? I'm just taking this junk out to the garage. Well, if you'd have stopped by my house, I'd have given you some rags and old papers. Uh, no, thanks. I'm having enough trouble with the boys. They've been trading this junk and leaving it all over the house. Oh, so that's it. That explains some of the things I just picked up myself. With this old bicycle seat and this beat-up teapot. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm glad to learn they've been leaving the loot someplace else besides our hall closet. <laughs> yeah. I found the bicycle seat in my easy chair. <laughs> It's really quite a surprise. I bet I pedaled halfway across the room before I could get up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the boys always get stuck with this junk. Well, you know, Oz, the thing that puzzles me is that how they could trade some perfectly good things for something like, well, like this beat-up teapot. Now, there's a worthless piece of junk if I ever saw one, especially for kids. Oh, well, you think that's something? Here, <laughs> take a look at this. What is it? Well, it's an old clock of some sort. Of course, this bicycle horn I don't think goes with it. Oh, I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> well, does it work? Uh, I understand it tells perfect time twice every 24 hours. <laughs> we can stick with that, Ricky. 
Uh, he claims not. Evidently, it must have been David. <laughs> uh, you know how kids are, Oz. I bet you did a lot of swapping and trading when you were a kid, too. Well, I don't mind the boys trading and swapping, Thorny, but, gee, I don't think they ought to get stuck all the time. Well, I think it evens up, Oz. Look at my boy, Will. He wound up with this beat-up teapot. Gee, I wish we could give the kids some sort of a graphic illustration. You know, some practical demonstration of what equitable trading is like. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Hi, Pop. Hi, Mrs. Conrad. Oh, hi. Hi, hey, Ricky. I understand you've been doing a little trading. Yes, sir. Were you and Pop trading? Well, we sort no, of... No, been... no, Ricky. We've just been discussing the fact that you kids seem to get stuck with a lot of this junk all the time. Well, now, wait a minute. Wait a second, Oz. You know, what about that swap we were going to go through with? This... You know, this, uh... Oh, 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 yes. Tea uh, kettle for the, uh... uh yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Thornberry and I think it might be a good idea if we, uh, uh, did a little swapping here. That, uh, tea kettle, you say, for, uh, this, uh, antique clock. Clock. Yeah, that, uh, seems to be, a, an equitable trade. Oh, I think I should warn you, Thorny, that this old clock, the more I look it over, I see that it's not exactly a beautiful piece of merchandise. In fact, I don't think it's run for a considerable number of years. Let's face it, Thorny, I would say this is a real piece of junk. Well, Oz, take a look at the teapot. I think it's a pretty fair trade. Yes, uh, the more I look over that teapot, I think you're absolutely right, Thorny. Shall we call it a fair exchange? It's the a deal. Teapot for the clock. <laughs> oh, there, now you see that, Ricky? Mr. Thornberry and I have made an equitable exchange, the clock for the teapot, and we're both very happy about it. You know, Oz, on the level, when I look at this clock and see what I get with it, I think it's a very good trade. Yes, I, uh, I see what you mean. As a matter of fact, the more I look at this, this, uh, this, uh, uh beautiful, uh, the more I look at this uh, teapot, uh, this will come in very handy. I can, uh... Uh, oh, I can, uh, use it to pour water in the car radiator with, uh, uh many uses, uh... Sure, sure. Well, uh, I think I'll see you later, Oz. Uh, uh, what's your hurry? Well, now, uh, no reflection on the clock, Oz, but I think I'll, uh, sort of hide it in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean, Barney. Now, Rick, you see what we mean by a fair bargain? Yes, sir. You're always supposed to exercise good judgment in any trade. Now, let's see if you learned your lesson. What would you be willing to trade me for this beautiful old English teapot? Well, I'll give you the scout knife. No, 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 don't be too hasty. You just saw the exchange between Mr. Thornberry and me. You heard all the conversation. Don't make this a one-sided deal now. Okay, then I'll give you the scout knife and this tennis ball. No, 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 Rick. Here, I'll just take the scout knife and you take that English teapot. Oh, gee, thanks, Pop. You're really happy with the exchange you just made, this... Beautiful scout knife for that old dented teapot? Sure, Pop. Well, what in the world are you going to do with that? I ain't keep my marbles in it. Well, I, I know, but, but Rick, just look at this. This is a beautiful scout knife, and that's an old dented teapot. You're sure you're happy with the bargain? Yes, sir. <laughs> look, Rick, I don't want to take advantage of you. Take the old teapot out to the garage, and I'll give you back your scout knife. Oh, no, Pop. A deal is a deal. <laughs> I, I know, Ricky. Look, please take the scout knife back, will you? It, it, it's, it's, uh, it looks very dangerous. I'm liable to cut myself. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, Pop. It doesn't have any blades. Mmm. <laughs> Dinner be ready in just a minute, darling. Oh, good. Lamb chops, huh? I hope you like them, sweetheart. Oh, I'm sure I will. I hope so, dear. Uh, Harriet. Yes, darling? The answer is no. No what? Whatever you're trying to get. <laughs> I'm not trying to get anything. Oh, Harriet. Then why all this darling, dear, and sweetheart stuff? Well, for goodness sakes, can't a woman be in love with her big, strong, handsome husband? Oh, well, no matter how much you flatter me, the answer is still uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, really, dear, I'm not trying to get anything else. Oh, I... Anything else? What do you mean, anything else? Well, I spent a little money today. Oh? Uh, what did you buy? Oh, it's lovely, dear. The minute I saw it, I said to myself, Ozzy's just going to be crazy about this. I know you'll just love it. Oh, oh, fine. Uh, what is it? 
Well, Catherine Thornberry and I happened to be passing by this cute little shop, and so we decided to stop in. I got the most wonderful bargain. Okay, well, what was it you bought? Well, I'm trying to give you a little background. I want you to understand all the circumstances. Uh, in other words, you're stalling. I'm not stalling. Well, okay, what did you buy? I'll tell you after dinner. Well, after dinner? Yes. Now I'm stalling. <laughs> Well, Harriet, if it's something nice and you've got a bargain on it, why are you so worried? Well, I'm not worried. You must know it's a clock. Well, that sounds like a very sensible purchase to me. It's an antique clock, too. It's mahogany and it has a little gold rim around the face, and all the parts are made in Switzerland. It's really beautiful. Oh, fine. Does it tell time? Well, no, that's the only trouble with it. <laughs> They're trying to fix the parts for me, but even if it doesn't work, it'll look lovely on the mantel. Oh, sure. And if we have any company, people ask what time it is, the boys can just turn the hand to the time. <laughs> uh, where is this thing? Well, you won't laugh at me now. No, no, no. Why should I laugh? Well, I was sort of afraid of your reaction, so I hid it in the hall closet. Oh, the hall closet. <laughs> you mean the closet in the hall? Well, yes, of course. Oh, well, uh... <laughs> Harriet, uh, the craziest thing happened. <laughs> you, you'll scream at this. Well, what happened? Uh, I, I'd better not tell you. you you'll, you'll scream at this. You want to see the clock? Mm, well, no, no, uh, not now, Harriet. I mean, why don't we wait till later? It, it might spoil your dinner. Spoil my dinner? Not as I mean, uh, it, it, uh, you might spoil my dinner. Uh, I, I, well, you know, we've got... Mmm, those lamb chops smell so good. <laughs> I don't mean the lamb chops, I mean the clock. Don't you want to see the clock? Well, Harry, after all, uh, uh, a clock is a clock is a clock. Oh. Well, this is more than a clock. This is a beautiful antique. Uh, yes, I know. You told me it, it's a beautiful antique. It, it doesn't tell time. Well, well, as soon as they fix the parts for me, they'll have the works for me in a couple of days. Oh. Well, why don't we eat dinner first? I have kind of a feeling I'll be getting the works before you do. <laughs> Hi, Pa. Hi, Pa. Oh, uh, hello, fellas. How come you're locking the door? Oh, uh, the, the closet door. I'm uh, uh, just playing a little joke on your mother. What, is Mom locked in there? No. <laughs> not a joke to lock somebody in a closet. Well, how come you're locking the door? Uh, well, uh, see, I'm locking the closet door to keep your mother out of the closet. I don't get it. Well, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, it's sort of an older folks joke, you, you might say. You guys will understand when you grow up and have a wife of your own. A wife of our own? Well, yes, of course. You mean one wife between the two of us? <laughs> Look, it's a, a nice evening. Why don't you guys go out and take a little walk, huh? Well, Mom doesn't want us to go out after dinner, Pa. Tell us some more about the joke. Uh, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, I'll let you guys be a very important part of the joke. Can you fellas keep a secret? Sure, Pa. Yeah, what's the deal? Well, uh... Remember the old clock that I traded to Mr. Thornberry that we thought was David's? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ricky told me about it. Well, see, here's what I want you guys to do. Don't say anything about it to your mother. Well, I saw a picture the other week where this one guy gave this other guy $1,000 not to snitch on him. <laughs> to me, I've heard of this picture before. Well, no, this is another one. Oh. Well, nevertheless, that's a, a bribe, Ricky. You can go to jail for that. Besides, I'm sure the guy got his just desserts in the end. You can buy an awful lot of desserts with a thousand dollars, boy. Well, that's not the point. Would a dollar be a bribe? Well, of course it would. How about 50 cents? Yes, that's a bribe, too. It's awful hard to talk with a soda straw in your mouth. Look, any money you give somebody to pay for his silence is a bribe. Not only that, it's pretty cowardly to be bullied into paying like that. I don't know. This guy in this picture was awful brave, Pop. Just like you. Well, nevertheless, it's a cowardly thing to allow yourself to be shaken down. However, let's forget about the, the picture. Why don't you guys go down and buy a soda for yourself? We don't have any money. Oh. 
Well, here, I think I can let you have a dollar. Is this a bribe, Pop? No, no, of course not. It's perfectly legitimate for a father to give his own son's money for sodas. I just don't want the police to come down here and griddle me. <laughs> I, I think you're in the clear. Oh, I think I hear your mother. Here, here's a dollar. Hurry up, fellas. Thanks, Pop. Thanks, Chief. Ozzy? Uh, yes, dear? Where are the boys? I thought they were with you. Oh, yes, they were. They just stepped out for a few moments. So late? Yeah, they'll be right back. Uh, how about it? How about what? Well, aren't you going to show me the beautiful clock you bought? Well, I'd love to, but you didn't seem to be interested in it before. Oh, Harriet, stop teasing. I think you said it was right in the closet, didn't you say you put it there? Yes, I did. That's funny. Something the matter, dear? Well, the door is locked. I wonder who could have done that. Oh, the boys didn't do it. Well, I didn't say the boys did do it. Oh. What makes you so sure they didn't do it? Uh, well... Won't hurt to ask them. No, no, no. Harriet, they won't talk. I mean, they won't be back for quite a while. I thought you said they'd be back in a few minutes. Oh, uh, well... Where'd they, they go? They just went down to the store. They wanted to buy a couple of chocolate bribes. I mean, uh, uh, chocolate sodas. Uh, I, I tell you, why don't you look for the key? I want to see Thorny about well, something. Wait, I don't know where the key is. Uh, I'll be right back, dear. Hi, Oz. What are you doing prowling around my garage in the dead of the night? Oh, is this your garage? You know darn well it is. However, since we've been old friends and neighbors for a good number of years, and since this is probably your first offense, I'll overlook it. Gee, thanks, Oz. As a matter of fact, thorny old pal, I was just over to your house looking for you. See... Remember this afternoon we made a little exchange? I traded you an old battered-up clock. Yeah? Well, my conscience has been bothering me, Thorny. I tell you what I'll do. I'll take the clock off your hands. And instead, I'll give you this beautiful jackknife. Guaranteed not to cut you. <laughs> well, uh, just a minute, Oz. I've been feeling pretty terrible myself. To think that I pawned off a battered old teapot on a friend. Now, I'll tell you what. You give me back the teapot, and I'll give you this dandy, lively bounder baseball. Uh, I tell you what we better do, Thorny. Why don't we just restore the whole thing to status quo? In other words, you give me back the old broken-down clock, and I'll give you back the teapot. I, I, it's in the garage here someplace, I believe. Uh, no, no, it isn't, Oz. What makes you so sure? Well, didn't you think it was strange when you found me in your garage? Well, yes, I did. As I say, I won't turn you into the police if you give me back the old broken-down clock. Oz, I'd love to, but unfortunately, it's not mine to give back. You see, with a little shrewd trading on my part, I was able to get a baseball for it. <laughs> Who did you trade with? My boy, Will. He wants to make a birdhouse out of it. <laughs> well, I might as well let you in on a little news. That clock happens to be very valuable. Well, naturally. That's why I was able to get a baseball for it. No, 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 you don't understand. It's a valuable old antique. Harriet bought it in an antique shop. What? And you're trying to get it back with that broken down old knife? Oz, you crook. However, I'm willing to forget everything if you'll just give me back that old teapot. Well, unfortunately, I can't. You see, I traded the teapot to Ricky. He used it to keep marbles in it. I understand every time he wants a marble, he pours one out the spout. Uh, you mean that you gave Ricky a valuable antique? Oh, how could you? Valuable antique? Sure, Catherine got it at the auction today. And you offered me a baseball for it? Why, you big crook, you! <laughs> I'll overlook it, provided you give me back the broken-down old battered clock. Now, Oz, you've already told me it's a valuable antique. Hi, Pop. Oh, Ricky, I'm here too, Pop. Oh, hi, boys. Hi, Mr. David, is that a clock you've got there? Yes, sir. Where'd you get it, David? I give Will a quarter for it. Uh, say, uh, Dave, uh, how would you like to make a little trade with your old dad? What do you want to trade, Pop? Well, you give me that clock, and I'll give you this beautiful antique knife. It doesn't have any blades. Say, Rick, is that a teapot you got there? Yes, sir, I got it from Pop. 
Well, Rick, old boy, old pal, how would you like to trade that teapot for this beautiful baseball? I'll give you the clock for the baseball. Well, uh, David, won't you give me the clock for the knife? No, sir, I want the baseball. I want the knife for the teapot. Well, I don't want the teapot. I want the clock for the knife. How about trading the teapot for the baseball? No, sir, I want the knife for the teapot. Z -z 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 wait a minute. I think I have something figured out here. Uh, uh, Thorny, uh, you exchange the baseball for the teapot with Ricky. Right. But I don't want the baseball. I want the baseball, Pop. I want the teapot. I want the knife for the teapot. Ricky, stop saying I want the knife for the teapot. But I want the knife for the teapot. Well, I want the clock for the knife. I want the baseball for the clock. Uh, wait, wait a minute, Oz. Now, let me try something here. Uh, Oz, you give David the knife. David, you give me the clock. Uh, Rick, you give your father that teapot, and I'll give you the baseball. See? Now, Oz... You give me the teapot, and I'll give you the clock. How's that? Well, that's perfect, Sonny. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I got the baseball. And I got the knife. Oh, I'm too old to go through that again. <laughs> if I can't have the knife, I want the teapot back. And if I can't have the baseball, I want the clock back. No, no, no. Wait, wait a minute now. If, if I give the, the, the clock... No, no, no. Hey, wait a minute. Ricky Here, the... Ricky. If you have the... Hey, I got the knife. And I got the baseball. I got the clock. And I got the teapot. <laughs> What are you doing wearing your overcoat in the house? Uh, oh, well, uh, I'm, I'm going to take it right off. Well, go ahead. Well, you're here. What's that, I dear? We're married. Uh, <laughs> I've seen you without your overcoat lots of times. No, I'm, well, I, I'm, uh, I'm going to take it right off. What's that big bulge under? Uh, oh, uh, I, I guess I must be putting on a little weight, that cooking of yours. <laughs> Would you answer the phone? I didn't hear anything. Oh, uh, well, why don't you answer the phone uh, just in case there might be somebody there? I would myself, except I want to hang this coat in the closet. Oh, I got the closet door open. Well, how could you? I have, I mean, uh, <laughs> we can't find the key. Oh, well, the back door key opens it perfectly. I'll show you the clock just as soon as I finish putting away the dishes. Oh, well, yes, that's a good idea. You, uh, the, put away the dishes Keep and... the door, dear. Uh, okay. Hi, Pops. Oh, oh, Rick. Shh. What are you doing? I'm just gonna put this clock back in the closet. Say it to your mother now. Ricky? Come on. Open the door, son. <laughs> Ricky? Ricky? <laughs> Come on, son. It's very funny, but the joke is over. Ricky, open the door. David? David, did you lock that door? David, open the door, David. Well, good night, Harriet. Good night, dear. <laughs> Ozzie, oh. you really don't like that clock, do you? Oh, sure, it's fine, Harry. Oh, I can tell you don't like it. Well, now that you mention it... Don't be afraid to admit it, dear. I don't care for it either. Well, as long as we both agree, I do think you could have bought something a little more useful for the same money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, there are dozens of things you could have bought instead. Uh, when are you going to take it back? Oh, I'm not going to take it back. I traded it this morning. You traded it? Mm -hmm, to Catherine Thornberry for the most beautiful old English teapot. <laughs> Don't forget that a completely different episode of The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet is heard every Friday night on radio. 
consult your newspaper for time and radio stations.